Hi, I'm Haley with Silver Moon Branding and Design. I'm a brand and packaging designer with 10 years of experience, and I'm here to show you how to make a square shaped bottle. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna start off in Adobe Illustrator. I have a blank file open. It doesn't really matter what size your canvas is because we're going to be exporting our selections. I have a sample of the bottle that I'd like to create. I think it's super helpful to have a reference point so that you can build things that look like they're in a realm of reality. What we're doing is not CAD, it's not there to be a manufacturer tool, but it is super important just to have a realistic looking image. So first I'm going to estimate about what the base of this would be. So it's going to take a little bit of eyeballing, but that is my perfectly imperfect method. So from what I can gather, the base of it from the bottom would look, let me choose a different color, it would look like this. So if I held this up and kind of eyeballed it, yeah, with the perspective accounting for everything, I think that's going to be a really good shape for us. So now that I have it back at zero degrees, um, we're going to be thinking about this like we're looking at it from the top angle. So I'm going to curve these edges a little bit because it's not perfectly pointy on the edges. It's got a bit of a curve. And then I'm also going to make this an outline because this is a hollow container. It's not a solid shape. So it kind of looks like the glass is thicker than normal. So I'm going to go up on the stroke size. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Um, and then we're going to come over here to our 3D and materials tab. It's under window, 3D and materials. And we're going to extrude this shape. So if you've watched my other videos, you've seen that I will use this revolve tool for round shapes. And since this is square, we're going to have to play with the shape here. So I can rotate it around and move it up. And now we're getting a pretty good view of how this is going to look. All right. And so now I'm going to estimate the height. So over here, I'm going to draw a line. It looks like the height is coming in at like 3.75. So I don't need that box. I just need that number. And I'll come back here and for the depth, I will put 3.75. There we go. And so at the bottom, it's got a bevel as well. So I'm gonna choose this bevel shape. And I'm going to choose round. And here we can choose the width and the height of the bevel. All right, so now I'm gonna copy this plane because this is our base. And I'm gonna make a copy of that. And I'm going to delete this 3D materials. The base here is solid, right? So we're gonna need to make another piece that goes here at the bottom. So I'm going to flip this. We don't need it to be an outline anymore. And I'm going to choose extrude again. And I'm going to adjust the depth so that its thickness is as such. And that's looking good. I'm going to add the bevel again. Let's see which side it gives me. Yeah, I think that'll go really nicely. It'll go this direction, though, and attach to the bottom. All right, so now we're going to duplicate that for the top. And then to create this round top piece, you're probably wondering like, okay, we have all these little pieces and parts. How do we connect it and give it an opening? So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to roughly trace this top part and that'll give us the round section we're looking for. So just like how we do with our round bottles, I'm going to guess where the middle is because again, this isn't a perfect cross section. So I'm going to make my lines here and mimic what we have going on with this screw top. It'll come out looking good, but it's again, not for manufacturing. So it'll look like it spins around, but it won't actually have the corkscrew. So now that we have this, we need to create the inside section. So I'm going to hit option, nudge, and create another sample. I'm going to open it up and then object path outline stroke. And that way we have the inside. And we don't need it to line up because when we pour from a bottle, it's straight on the inside, you know, straight smooth, and then the bumps are on the outside only. 
So I'm going to cut that and I'm going to cut that. We'll delete this outside line. There we go. And then we're going to take these lines. We're going to connect them. Um, like I said, we're going to delete these inside points so that we have a nice smooth interior. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but if you do want it to smooth out some of these anchor points, I like the smooth tool. So I'll take that and I'll draw along the line until it gives us those nice bezier points. With both shapes connected, I hit Command J to join them and then I'll turn it into a solid fill here. And this is where we use our handy dandy revolve tool. And there it revolves and it gives us that look of those corkscrews. So this one's looking a little Michelin man to me. I think I'm gonna tweak this a little bit. And that's the fun thing about this is if you hit the 3D revolve and it's not quite looking how you want, you can always jump in here and live edit the shape. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. All right, so now that I have all of my pieces, I'm going to export them as selections. So export selection, I'll name this one opening. You can name it whatever you want. I'll go back and I will name this one the bottle. I'll come back here and I'll hit export selection and this one will be the top, bottle top. And this one will be the bottle, bottle bottom. Bottle bottom, try saying that. <laughs> bottle bottom. Or bottle base. We'll do bottle base because that's less of a tongue twister. <laughs> all right, and now we select all of these and choose OBJ from the drop down menu and hit export. All right, now that you have your shapes, let's open up Adobe Dimension so that we can start combining all of those pieces and parts and make it look like a real bottle. So I'll hit create new and set up my canvas. Um, if you want a larger high res shape, this default new project is not gonna be it. So to make it a higher res, I come up here and I click 100. That shows you how small it is at 100%. And then I go up to We'll go up to a width of 99. We'll party like it's 99. You can go up to 300 and that'll give you a really high resolution export when it's time to render. All right, so now it's time to start assembling the pieces. All right, so here's the base. I'm going to rotate it. I hold shift and hit these rotate keys to be able to keep them at pretty even, um, Keep them at pretty even degrees of rotation otherwise it gets a little loosey-goosey and i like everything to be on the grid i'm a designer that loves the grid and now we can bring in our bottle and all we're doing is just moving these pieces around so that they connect um, i love this tool over here this one says move to ground you click it it aligns it with the ground but we need it to be a little bit higher because we have this base, but it at least gets it into the plane that we need. All right, now we're gonna place the top. There we go. Rotate that around. You don't have to get them perfectly lined up. I'll show you how to perfectly align them, but just for the sake of having things in the general place, that's how you do it. All right, and then we'll move to the opening where we have our twisty top here. And that's about the general place that we'll want it. All right, so I'm gonna rename these. Again, anyone from Adobe, if you're watching, I would love if these OBJ files imported and came with their names, but that's just me. And then I can hold shift and click from the top and the bottom. So again, hit the top and then hold shift and click the bottom and that'll highlight all of these. And then I hit this folder button and it groups them all together. So now I can name this my bottle and click this folder file and all of them show up. So now I'm gonna do that trick again. You can do it from the bottom where you click the bottom and then hold shift and then click the top. You get them all selected. And then I come here to the align and distribute tool. And this gives me the tools to align these perfectly so that there's no weird gaps in any angle you look at it, it's perfectly aligned. So I click align center Z and align X. So after you align those, then you can see how they fit. And it looks like that base for whatever reason is smaller. It's probably because we had the outline on it. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click this bottle layer and you can see the size down here is 121, sorry, my camera's in the way, is 121 by 275. And so then if I look at the base, it is sure is smaller. So I'm gonna click that lock and I will do 1.21. And that looks good to me. And then now that we know that for the base, we can do that for the top. And then we will select all those again, go back to our align and distribute tools. There we go. And then from here, I'll adjust the positions vertically. And you see how when we get in closer that those shapes kind of meld together. I think that might be one of my favorite parts of Dimension is that you can create these complex shapes and you don't even really have to do anything extra to make them join. Okay, so now you can see there's a shadow here where the opening does not fit with the top. It has a shadow. So similar to the top, you can drag and drop this um, until it says that there's zero centimeters between it and the shape. Um, I also added a little bit extra so I could submerge it down. So it seemed like the width of the top and the opening connected. And now it's time to add our texture, glass. So since I have everything in a group, I can take our material and drag it over to the bottle and it applies it to the whole thing. So then you can come over if you wanted it to have a little more of like a frosted texture, you can come over here and adjust the roughness. That'll make it look more frosted. Um, you can make it glow. You can add a metallic element. And the translucence is fun as well. You can increase the index of refraction, which is from what I can tell, just like how shiny you want it. And then density of material. So it's also fun to come over and play with some of the lighting elements. So here we have the studio light arches and it just plays with how the light travels through this glass and you can find the effect and the shape that sells your design. And then from here, you can also apply labels. That's just a drag and drop. You can place it over top. You can create fill liquid to sell that you have a product in here. So yeah, that's a pretty easy way to make a square bottle. All right guys, that's the tutorial. I hope you like it. Leave me a comment below asking me any questions or requesting what shape bottle or container I should make next and subscribe to see more.